Hello, Internet. This is the JWCP Game Activity Podcast, a podcast hosted by Jonathan Peters and Wyatt Conrad. I'm your host, Jonathan Peters. I'm your co-host, Wyatt Conrad. And this is a podcast to talk about the vast topic of video games. Last week on this podcast, we uh, why it's been a while since we've done a podcast. To be completely honest with you, it's oh, been yeah. like three months. It's been a minute. It's definitely been a minute. We're it's weird get, getting in here, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna have to get in the flow of things. You know what I mean? Definitely. So if you didn't catch it last week, struggling to find my stuff, we talked about uh, PUBG, Fortnite, Warzone, Apex Legends, basically all battle royale games. And I think we dogged on Fortnite a lot, didn't we, Wyatt? Uh, yeah, we usually do that. Like GTA and Fortnite, we usually dog on those games. Yeah, not GTA. Yeah, we did. Well, not then, but we yeah. have. Uh, so we talked good about PUBG and Warzone Apex, obviously, because they're good games. So um, this week, we have special guest star. Uh, he teaches A-Push. He's from Columbia City Local High School. Uh, he went to Purdue. Uh, we introduced you, Mr. David Peterson. He's my history teacher. It's kind of weird having him in here. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of weird to be up here. Yeah. Oh, man. Kind of shaking. We're happy to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good to be here. Shaking, be cool. but I'm still rolling. All right, so let's just get rid of these papers. So, Mr. Peterson, you play a lot of survival games. Yeah, recently I've gotten more into them than, uh, than when I started out. When I was first gaming, I was more, you know, COD, and I played a lot of, uh, you know, shooter games, and then recently I've gotten more into the uh, survival era games. Yeah, that's good. Um, so, got to ask you, so what, what, what kind of console do you main? And we won't, we won't judge you for it. Xbox One, yeah. All right. Xbox One, that's not bad. It's not bad. It's Xbox, but it's not bad. <laughs> It's pretty bad. I don't like it, but you know, I had PS PS2 when I was younger, but uh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, everyone has the PS2. And I tried a little PC when I was in, in college, but I didn't have a PC that could really do it. So mm. Xbox was where I stuck. Yeah, it's mm. hard to put in the uh, amount of money you want to put in yeah. when you go to get a PC. I built my own gaming setup for PC, and I I dropped everything I had. Yep. I could have bought a car instead. I decided to buy a gaming setup. <laughs> exactly. And I still kind of regret it to this day, but I you know I get. I get to watch myself lose in PUBG at 100 FPS now, so you know that's that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. There you go. So uh, this week we have some new business. We're going to talk about Daisy, Skyrim, Rust, Ark, and Seven Days to Die. And uh, frankly, I've never played Seven Days to Die, uh, and I've played a little bit of Ark. And I assume Rust is kind of like Daisy, just a little more toxic. <laughs> so let's get into it. All right. So, uh, Mr. Peterson, out of those uh, games that I just listed to you, if you only had to ever play one again, what would it be? Or actually, you can choose off the list, too, I guess. Pose. Um, right now, I've been playing a lot of DayZ, and probably if I just say this time in my life, probably DayZ, but um, that's a hard one. I played a lot of Skyrim, too. I know some people have put like, you know, 600 plus hours into Skyrim, uh, but I probably would say right now DayZ. Uh, of, that, of that list that, you're, that you mentioned there. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm kind of a, you know, I kind of started playing Skyrim back when I was like, what, real young, you know, I, yeah. was, I was pretty young. So how, how many hours do you have in it? Hours in total. See, it's been across about uh, three different platforms on multiple different consoles. <laughs> yeah. So I, I honestly don't know. I imagine it's over 500, may, maybe 600. Yeah. But it's definitely quite a bit. I used to love that game. I played it on Xbox One, PS3, uh, PlayStation 4, PC. Uh, what else did I play it on? I think that's about it. But it was, oh, I played it on PS3 too. Did I say PS3? I probably said PS3. And uh, yeah, I put lots of hours on that game. I love that game. And I've never truly finished it, which I feel like that's kind of a sin, honestly. So I think I might be able, I might, uh, I might have to replay it, finish it. Yeah, I don't know if I've done all the side quests necessarily, but I think what's nice about Skyrim is you have the modded, you know, the modded part of it that, that really kind of makes it like eternally play, playable, right? Which you can keep, yeah. you keep modding and you can do things that are pretty obscure and you can also do some things that are, that make the game even better. So I've never played Skyrim, so I assumed that you guys would take off and it looks like you have. So <laughs> fill me on, uh, kind of give me a brief description for me and the folks back at home who don't know what Skyrim is. Someone give me a little brief description of what Skyrim is. Okay, so <laughs> oh, just asked, looking yeah. at me. Be like, yeah, right. we well, you know, Skyrim is it's part of the Elder Scrolls franchise. So there's a lot of games before it, and there's a lot of games after it nowadays. There's actually an online version. I don't like it. it doesn't make much sense. Because, like, you play with people that are, like, way higher levels than you. <clears throat> but it's kind of hard to explain if you, if you talk to somebody that has no idea what uh, what the whole franchise is about, but you can explain it. Skyrim's probably the best 
introduction you can have to it because some of the earlier games are just kind of, you know, they're old, not fun to play. The storyline's weird. It's kind of weird to get into. Skyrim has more of a friendly, like, you, you know, friendly user base kind of player so base. So timeline, our, our story-wise, what, what, what's the end goal? What are you fighting uh, for? The end goal, well, you find out you're the Dragonborn after, you know, you get caught. So you, you start off and you're in a horse carriage and you got caught by uh, Imperials. Wait, the, the horse-drawn carriage? Oh, hey, you're awake. That meme? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, All yeah right. that one. I think, right, I think I people would know that. Oh, you know everything about it then. You're good to go. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> we don't even have to talk about it, bro. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it just it introduced you to the first dragon. A dragon goes on top of a tower. You know, if I get in that logistics, I, you know, I'd, I'd be talking forever. But you pick your character. There's a bunch of different races, and there's certain attributes to different races. So what are you usually? Uh, I usually go with like uh, a Khajiit. Yeah. It's like the cat. And yeah. then uh, there's a Nord. I usually go with Nord. Yeah, Nord. Imper- I always Im- like the. Sometimes I go with Imperial, but. I always like to do like a, a Viking build. So like yeah. A big, a big Nord guy. And yeah, try to be fun. as Viking as I can possibly get. And I, go, I don't even go like too har- high armored up. I usually just keep like the base like Imperialist armor or whatever. Or not Imperialist, but the, right. the Nord armor and right. uh, keep it the same. Yeah, I've done like. Uh, I've done. The orc, I've done orc before. It's not that great. I don't like mm-hmm. it as much because the, 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 uh, the thing, the, what's that special? It's like a special kind of thing where you, yeah, you, the special skill, special ability or special yeah, ability. skill for every certain race. And it doesn't really matter which race you pick, you know? I mean, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> all, yeah, Does ultimately, it? you can kind of like you can once you start playing, you can kind of pick your own skills, yeah. and, and base it off of that. So you're, you're still a dragonborn no matter what. It just, if you want to be a cat, you can be a cat. If you want to be a Nord or whatever, Nords are, you know, they're, they're the people of Skyrim. So yeah. it, you, you can actually, <laughs> you can actually experience uh, racial, like, kind of crime. Yeah, it's, that's actually you true. Can, yeah. You can be, people, <laughs> yeah. they'll judge you on your race. Really? Yeah, they will yeah. sometimes. They yeah. will judge you on your race. And it, uh, if you're a Nord, you're... Nine times out of ten, you're probably not going to get judged. But if you go like to a Khajiit or something, he's going <laughs> to like, he's going to, he's going to say some bad stuff about you. Let's yeah. just say that. <laughs> really, right. honestly, like, it's it's like a Viking. You know, it's like it's like Scandinavia. It's yeah. that's kind of what it looks like. I mean, it, I think that's weird. The, the fonts and the yeah. the language is kind of like Old Norse and um, similar in some characteristics. And and they, they're supposed to be Vikings. And even like the end game, you have Val, you have basically a Valhalla, um, which right. is you know where you go when you fight with all the heroes and stuff like that so right so like once you get past picking your race you go through this you, you go through a bunch of you know they're, they're just trying to lead you through the game teach you how to play the game and you come out of a cave that you're in where you you pretty much just you get introduced to some new like animals and mobs and stuff not mobs this is minecraft <laughs> like you know enemies and stuff like different kinds of things you can do you get introduced to a bow you know how to use weapons how to use potions, how to poison certain things. So you come out, and that's pretty much where the main storyline starts because you go to, it's Riverwood, right? Yeah. Riverwood, talk to, uh, talk to Gerda, and then she tells you to go to Whiterun. And Whiterun's like, it's a big city. Like, it's not, it's not super big, but it's pretty big. And you go there, you talk to the Jarl, and he has you go do stuff. It, you pretty much just do tasks for him. You do you, the first task you do, you do it for his son, and uh, you go to this big temple, and you go in and you have to kill a. It's a it's a Draugr, but it's like a. I can't remember the name. Some type of boss Draugr. Yeah, basically. it's like yeah. a boss Draugr. It's like really powerful. Like it's not super powerful, but like to you, since you're a low level, it'll be powerful. But. You know, it's kind of hard to explain yeah. a really story-based game. And I don't know if we have the time for yeah, it. Yeah, I don't think we yeah, have the time. But, yeah. So pretty much, it's a game with a lot of content, and I think that's why people really love it, because you can pretty much, you can go off, do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And now they have DLCs where you can build your own house. You can, they have other tasks. They have side quests that are fun. You can actually have yeah. children. They can get married and have yeah, children. Yeah, you can get married. Really? You can Lydia, adopt, yeah. Lydia. Yeah, I think Lydia, I married her a couple time, times bro. at least. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> she was a baddie. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I, yeah. Honestly, I don't. I don't think I put nearly as many hours. I, don't, I can't. I don't know how many I have, but not. You know, said five hundred or wherever. I, I right. played on. I played on Xbox and on PC. I played on PC when I was in college, and then Xbox. In, you know, a few years ago, probably. But yeah, um, I like PC. It's fun. Yeah. It's yeah. better with mods. Because uh, mods are a whole another story. Because there's people have released mods where it changes the entire story. It's a, yeah. like a, pretty much a completely new game. Yeah, and it's actually really cool. I've I've played a mod where it's born again, where you're, you're basically you're not the dragonborn, you're just an average citizen, and like you basically yeah. have to. And it's it actually adds a little bit more challenge to it because you you don't get all the you know like you don't get all the cool equipment and, and stuff. You have to right. actually basically like like you start out basically chopping chopping wood, and you have to sell wood and try to make money off of that. Huh. It's it's pretty pretty fun. You basically that sounds like fun. Sounds life. like it would take. Do a the game time, do the mods add in? Um, like where they feel first party? Do they feel like third party mods? They they some of them feel like third party. They can be pretty intrusive, but some of them are very very close to what it would look like. They just blend in really well. Yeah, yeah. some really of well. them are subtle, but they, you can notice it. Subtle differences, but you can notice it. You know, like when you add like there's a mod where you can add guns in the game. But it's not like you know you don't add an AK forty seven. It's like a dwarven gun. Dwarven is like a, a colon, colony of people. They use the they use kind of gold. It looks like gold, like dwarven ingots and stuff. And it's pretty much just a material in a colony of people who made all this. And it's really good, really, uh, really good weapons. But it's not the best you can get. The best is like ebony and stuff like that. And daedric, daedric, uh, daedric yeah. armor and tools and all that. Yeah. And there's pretty much tiers. It's kind of like Minecraft. There's pretty much tiers of weapons and stuff. And certain weapons that you can get from side quests and main quests. I mean, if you if you really just pay attention to the main quests, you can finish the game without doing the yeah. side quests. But it's fun to do the side quests in between. You know, I feel like it's like that's the same thing with the. Do these side quests games. add value to the game? Yeah, they can get you better armor. You can level up your character to get more health, mm-hmm. stamina, magicka, magicka. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Right. And then uh, the. The main point of Dragonborn is you can kill dragons and, like, obviously you can kill dragons, but you absorb their soul and you can use it for shouts. Yeah. It sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. It's really it, cool. It's like, the first time like you do it. Black Canary from, like, Batman series, like, that type of shouting, like, screaming? Kind of, yeah. Because, like, there's a bunch of different shouts. Like, the first one you get is Unrelenting Force, and it really just, just pushes people. And then, like, you oh, can, so they have abilities. Yeah. Or will yeah. they, they, okay. There's Level different types of shouts. There's, uh, and that's another thing. Side quests, you can get different type, types of shouts and you can use those. But you have to get dragon souls to upgrade those shouts and you have to learn words for the shouts. It's really, it's really cool. I think it's a really interesting com- concept that nobody else tapped into back then. And yeah, I feel like I, feel like I was going to say it kind of feels like it's the first, um, not necessarily sandbox, but kind of open world game that I think I, I remember being like that popular. Right. Like you can you can almost quite literally climb wherever you want to go. Like even you, I mean, you can jump you can jump up up on the mountains and stuff like that, and and you right. can do you can go really feels like wherever. Yeah, it feels like you have free range pretty yeah. much, and you can find different stuff when you uh, go off and explore. You can swim around. I don't like swimming around, but you can swim around. You can find like abandoned ships and stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. I played with my my best friend when I was in. When I first played, I was in. He had he had the game, and I played with him. And I was in high school, and um, we would go like on swim swim meets together, and we would play on the swim meet. And, like while we were not, you're not, you know, not uh, swimming. Like like when we go to state, we would have um, um, you know, we'd stay in a in a hotel room together, and we'd play there and stuff like that. And, right. That sounds um. Cool. So it was yeah. Like, for me, it was always like uh oh, you know, I'm gonna go see my friend. I I get to go play play Skyrim, and then yeah, and then um. And then when I was in college is when I, I bought my own copy and stuff like that. And, and then, then for me, sometimes, like, you know, after playing a while, you're like, okay, I'm going to move on to something else. But yeah, and I'm not really into like the lore. I'm not, I'm not like for no, like not for any uh, superheroes or anything like that. I've never been like to like really know like the lore, really care that much about like that, de- that much depth into it. So like, this is the only Elder Scrolls game I've played. Yeah. Um, it's, the lore is really hard. It's hard to get into since there's so many games, but I feel like the newer age of lore People don't like as much, yeah. Just because it doesn't, it, it was not. It doesn't feel like it, they put enough enough uh, care into it. Mm-hmm. it. Doesn't feel like they really tried. But I couldn't personally say because I stopped playing after Skyrim. I stopped yeah. buying their games because I didn't like the online aspect. I didn't think Skyrim should ever be an online thing. Yeah, I never played online. But yeah, I don't, I don't think it was a necessary uh, contribution to the series. But uh, 
one thing I have to cover. Uh, so you you can get priest masks, and it's pretty much. Aren't I'm pretty sure they're like they're dragon. They were dragonborns. Yeah, uh, yeah. and they could. Uh, you can get them, and they have abilities. Like they're really powerful. They're pretty mm-hmm. powerful, and there's a bunch of different ones. It's really it's not introduced in the main story a whole lot. I think there is one, uh, one quest where you can go get one, but I don't think it's. It's it's not a required thing to get, but it's very interesting because there's lore behind it and stuff. I'm not a big fan of the lore either, but I've looked into it since I got uh, Oblivion. It's like a game, a couple games behind Skyrim, I think, and it, that's a whole other game. You know, there's <laughs> there's a bunch of there's a bunch of story to it, so it's it's a it's just a game you want to dump hours into, and you just like you look back at it and you're like you can get. Completely overpowered. Yeah, I think All the right. mod ability that alone makes it so you can, you, can, you know, I've played it. I've played it once through entirely, you know, clean, right? And then I've played it several times through, or just played hours dumping into it, even not even playing those main storyline as mods. I think I've, I've played more time as living another life, not as a dragonborn, and just trying to like get money to buy a house and you know to you know try to basically have this life. Oh, it's that um, in depth, right? Yeah, yeah, really. That sounds cool. Yeah. It's it's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the two mods that I use the most are probably backpacks, um, because you can. And every every Skyrim player knows that you just basically stock up on as much crap, and it's so hard to get rid of stuff. Oh yeah, you, you, you run out, you run out of uh, space really quickly. Yeah, and you get burdened. And then yeah. um, so then backpacks as this, so you can have more storage and carry <laughs> carry more weight. But um, especially if you fight dragons, those dragon bones weigh a lot. Yeah, dragon skin oh, so yeah. there's a weight skills. system too. Oh I yeah, there's a weight system. I almost sell those scales and bones immediately because I just can't carry them around. And right, yeah. they're useful. I mean, yeah. they they feel useful at the moment, but I feel like they're not that useful. Yeah. Like unless you know how to make, because you have to learn how to make certain tools and stuff. Yeah, so you can make uh, tools and armor out of the dragon bones and the dragon skills, which it's pretty good armor. But Daedric armor is probably the best. But pretty sure, yeah, it's the best. And uh, you, there's. A lot of side quests you can get into. You can make an entire podcast off of one side quest. Yeah. I feel like because there's could. a lot to it. You know. Yeah, but, and you can pick like you, do you want to be you know do you want to be like one arm wield, two arm wield, right? You know you want to be a, a mage. You know yeah. you can specialize in certain things because there's yeah. stones around the entire uh, the entire game, mm-hmm. and you can hit those and they'll give you a boost of that certain skill. So you can just pick one, and then you can be that for the entire game. Yeah, archery. Those are usually what I do is like a one arm, two armor archery. Yeah. I've done I've done the mage ones, but I don't know. mage is fun. It just depends what you're doing. I usually yeah. do like uh, I like conjuration because you yeah. get to conjure stuff and yeah. make things to fight for you. Being a easier when you get archery and you start specializing in archery, that becomes pretty overpowered because you don't have to be anywhere near them. You can just right. nail them and kill them almost immediately. Like, yeah, I've never like been hundred yards away. The game, though. I mean, I, I'm good at it, but like you know, I die. And then I just don't like. I'm not very strategic with the fighting yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I never really specialize with anything. I usually go with like uh, just recently, like not recently, but the recent times that I played, I went into uh, two handed, yeah. two handed weapons and heavy armor and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just because I got tired of dying so much. But yeah, that's what I do for my Viking build too: is one armed or oh, one handed yeah. or two handed. But yeah. So. Yeah. I've I've went on this website and I was reading up because it sounds like Skyrim is an absolutely huge map, right? It wouldn't be. I mean, it's not. I wouldn't say it's bigger than um, like GTA is probably bigger. Really? Yeah. Well, they got me thinking. Well, I'm reading. Might the, feel like it. Yeah. The number twenty fifth spot. It says uh, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. So, and on number twenty four, it says Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Um. So there's a lot of Skyrim chapters. Is there more than one Skyrim game in the Elder Scrolls series? I don't think there's more than one Skyrim game, but I think I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to look that up because I don't. I'm I to my knowledge I wouldn't believe it would be, mm, but I haven't yeah. played any. If there is, well, the Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim comes at 15 miles, which is ranked 25th. I'm trying to get some comparison. So if if anyone plays uh, PUBG, it's ranked in at 23 with 24.7 miles. Uh, Assassin's Creed uh, 22 27.2 miles. I think Minecraft is somewhere really low on the bottom because I think Minecraft was like 60 million miles. Right. The crew, 1,900 miles. Actually, wow. let's see. Fuel, 5,560 miles. Wow. 
So Skyrim's a small map, apparently. It's a small map, but I feel like the way the transportation you get, you know, you can only, you can walk yeah. and you have a horse. Like, you know, there's not a yeah. lot of transportation. So I feel like it, it feels a lot bigger than it actually is. Right. How, how, are, how detailed is the map? Does, is it, does it feel beautiful. full? It's, it's yeah, beautiful. it's very yeah. detailed. I would say it's very detailed because you're running, you, you won't walk and if you walk anywhere, you'll run into something unique. When people talk about gaming consoles or talk about like gaming PCs, a lot of times when they will say like, okay, here's how does it look, they'll usually use Skyrim as like their, their example of like, oh, you know, what are the graphics like? And like, here's Skyrim, here's, here's, here's really? comparison. Yeah. Because it's right. just a beautiful map. You know, it looks, it looks like, um, it, it looks like something where like you'd see you know, Scandinavia. It's got, you know, pine trees everywhere and mountains and it's beautiful. Right. I feel like some people like to play it just because they, they would want to actually experience that in real life. That yeah. kind of living, that yeah. kind of, just that whole atmosphere because it's completely unknown to us because we've never had it but in the virtual world it's you know that's what it, that's how it is but i feel like other people that's why they get into lore and stuff because they want to experience mm-hmm. that but they can't really because you know that it's fake yeah and I'm, i mean I'm a, I'm a hunter as well and there be times where i'll just be like i'm just gonna go on, get on there and you know kill some elk or something and right. that's, that's like that's all i just do is just yeah. hunt if you really yeah. So, uh, what's, what's survival like? Is it, is it like hunger food bar, like kind of like Minecraft? You have health that you need to regen with? You have a health bar and you can use food to uh, gain back health, but you don't need food to live. Yeah. You actually don't drink water. You drink alcohol. Yeah. Nice. So you could be just wasted throughout the entire Which, game. To be frank, that's not inaccurate with how a lot of, uh, in Europe was at the time was, you know, cause, cause water was so dirty and hard to come by like clean water right. sources so alcohol was what a lot of people drank primarily was was uh was alcohol like me at least it's mead. realistic yeah <laughs> you could yeah. i mean honestly you could just be some just completely drunk guy just walking around yeah. killing, the whole, the whole killing time. dragons and stuff vikings in reality would actually put they'd put like raw meat into mead and then just let it sit there and then they would and it'd last forever in that in that state and then they could just eat the raw meat like that right yeah because yeah, they so would like chemically cook it yeah yeah it's huh. it's honestly really cool yeah i think it's funny how you're using your history knowledge yeah, in video yeah. games <laughs> yeah it's kind of weird man it's kind of like, like you know you can talk about it's weird you can relate pretty much everything to history yeah I mean, and i, I like the viking stuff is really cool to me too because you know my grandpa is swedish and so i'm quarter swedish and then the viking history with that too it's so like that's that's kind of part of why i like skyrim so much is because the the Viking aspect, and I like to build Viking stuff. So, all right, not to not to cut us off, but we That's have right, been yeah. talking about Skyrim for a half an hour. Really? really? Yep. Wow. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's cut to a quick another topic. So, uh, quick intermission, Wyatt. Um, if you aren't familiar and this is your first podcast, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you if you like it, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcast, and Apple Music. So we're everywhere. You just can Google JWCP game activity and find us anywhere really if you go outside and yell our uh our channel name we will come to you we will so uh, i got once asked what jwcp stands for do you know what jwcp stands for well you know that's a funny story because it's really really simple but it just kind of rolls off the tongue so i like it it's literally just john or jonathan you say you use jonathan Jonathan wyatt conrad Conrad Peters, peters which sounds weird it is now. If you say it, when you say JWCP, it, it just, just rolls, rolls off, off the tongue. tongue. Yeah, I really, it, it sounds nice. My thought process behind JWCP game activity is: if you look up game activity on Google or maybe Spotify or any platform, you're gonna find a a billion results in 0.2 seconds. Right. So JWCP it really puts uh it it really puts uh like a a label on us, and like like on Twitter, I'll talk about. JWCP is doing this this week, you know. So I, I use it as like a, a mammogram for is that the right word? Mammogram? Acronym? Anagram? Acronym? Acronym. Yeah, yeah. Acronym. Uh, that's I what use the teacher's an, here for, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I use it as an acronym for us. So I, that's what I, that's my thought process behind it. And I just wanted something to identify ourselves with. And JWCP sounded, you know, good. Rolled off the tongue. Um, yeah. It so it's pretty nice. It is. So let, let's segue into our next topic here. Uh, we have Daisy, uh, Rust, Ark, and Seven Days to Die. Um, so which one we want to talk about next? I think, um, I feel like we can go deep into Daisy too. Let's get a quick game in. Uh, you want to talk about Ark? Ark's kind of a simple game, but yeah. in depth. 
I think Russ and Ark are pretty similar in a lot of ways. So we can almost talk about them at the same time, but oh um, yeah, we can talk about Ark. All right, let's do Ark. Have you guys played Ark before? Or? I've technically played both Rust okay. and Ark, but I have not put much, if uh, just an hour, into yeah. Rust. Is yeah, that- I've been, I, I've played Rust. I've watched a lot of people play Rust, but it's right. not on since it's not on Xbox, and I didn't have a PC that was necessarily like I haven't put that much time into it as opposed to Ark. I've put more time yeah. into. It's coming on a console. Rust is. It is. Yeah, sometimes this year is. Yeah, I've heard, but yeah, I uh, I, get it. I, don't know. I refused to buy Rust right when it came out because of kind of the price. But it, mm-hmm. it just seemed like such a competitive game that I, I didn't really want to get into it. Like, I, I'm more of a, a work hard, um, get success type guy. I don't, I don't want to see that type just fall at, at any yeah. given moment. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you make much progress. And I guess. Yeah. And also, I, I learned that um, I was watching a lot of stuff on ARC a few days ago, prepping for the podcast. I learned that um, you, your base isn't safe even when you're offline. Right. So, like, you can set up, um, like, electricity in your home and then you get a notification when your base is getting rated on your pc so you have to hop into the game and defend it that i'm not a big fan of whatsoever Mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like if i'm not playing the game i'm not playing the game yeah Yeah. i don't want to be on call for a video game right that just seems like a lifestyle but uh, let's let's hop into art um before we hop into rust uh so i haven't played i haven't i haven't played that much of arc i hopped into it with uh me and white hop into it with our friends a little while ago, so I'm not yeah. too familiar with it, um, but I, I know enough to talk about it. But I don't I don't know the main goal. Is there a main goal in Ark? It's a lot like Russ. And honestly, I bought I bought Ark because I because Russ wasn't available on on Xbox. And I was like, what's a similar game? And I found Ark. But basically, you're trying to build a base, and you're trying to you're trying to um, uh, basically foster and and um, train dinosaurs and and uh, and raise dinosaurs that you can then use to either for combat or for, you know, for agriculture and stuff like that. You're, you're basically, it's basically, I would say it's like, um, rust, but you have dinosaurs that you can then use and harness to, to accomplish a lot more. Really? So it's, it's sounds like a simple game, but it's a simple base building game. Is yeah. it? I wouldn't, right. I don't know. I wouldn't call it simple. It's kind of it, the crafting, def- the crafting, uh, the crafting part of it is kind of, uh, difficult. Say, yeah. Grafting is more complex than Rust, probably. Right, and then you know, you, uh, I got on there because I wanted to tame a megalodon. Didn't work out well for me. <laughs> what happened? I died. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. something. I think, um, I think Ark is fun to play with friends, but it gets annoying when you're far away and then you just get teleported back. Yeah, yeah. Especially like if you die. I feel like I, that's not a PC thing. I don't think that's a PC thing. I don't know. I, I've played on. I've only played on console. Yeah. Of, you know, most of these games. So, you know, PlayStation. So I don't, I'm not sure if this relates directly to the whole franchise game. Um, yeah, I don't like that about it either, though. I mean, we, you know, you want to go off and do your own thing and then come back and see what your buddy got. You know, you don't want to go off and then have it be teleported back. Yeah. yeah I think that just kind of takes a little bit of the realism and the, the fun out of it. Mm-hmm. So, I mostly played Ark alone and just, you know, build my own base yeah. and stuff like that. So what's base building look like? Is it easy? Does it, can you get really detailed? Can you terraform the land? I mean, I know you can like chop down trees, but. Yeah, you can't really do much with it. You need yeah. to terraform. You can't I don't think you can terraform a lot. It's not really kind of like a yeah. mining game. You know, you can't really go on your ground and stuff like that. I mean, you can. In certain places you can, I've heard, I've heard but I haven't played. Uh, I've only played like the default map usually because there's different maps and stuff, different, uh, different things you can go into and get into. So I don't think it's more it's more just like you know you build something on top of the land and you have like a whole base and you have a bunch of stuff on that base you can keep it there you know if you play a single player game or a multiplayer game as long as it's not on a server i think servers are a little different servers you might have to i don't know I, i've never played on a server personally but i liked it when i played with my friends it was fun but it definitely got annoying to the point where we just turned up the skills and stuff so we could make it really easy to like level ourselves. Oh, I remember up. that. Like I, I punched a tree and I think I could, yeah, yeah, like one hit it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> punch a T Rex and he dies. Yeah. Yep. You have a, a dinosaur that goes 100 like 200 miles an hour. That's what it's about. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, what? So, Ark is kind of like a survival game too. That's why we're talking about. Oh it. yeah. Um, definitely so is. what's the what's survival like? Is it? I mean, do you have to stay next to a fire to not get frost by? You have to eat. Yeah, you do have to do that kind of stuff. You have to mm-hmm. eat, you have to drink, you have to uh, you have to make sure you're not 
cold, die. Yeah. You know, get too hot. Can you get dysentery? Like I think you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, actually. you can. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, eat you something poop rotten. A lot. Yeah, you do, and you can pick up your you can pick up your fecal matter and use it in a yeah in like to, for, for fertilizer and stuff. Like really, that. Yeah, yeah. I poop. like that. You use big poops too. Yeah, yeah. dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, dinosaur poop. Yeah. Also, you can steal an egg. I stole a really big egg, and uh, you get hunted it's terrifying. down. <laughs> I just see this gigantic dinosaur, and I hear his feet just start just boom, stomping boom, harder boom, and boom, harder boom, and harder. Boom, boom. I've never ran faster in a game. In light, I, like I, I ran in real life technically, and it was it was terrifying. I I couldn't believe it. And then I look back, I'm thinking, oh, I, yeah, I must have gapped him, right? He must be back there. Nope, he was right yeah. there, just flung me across the mat. I didn't even have a t- chance to react. Didn't even have a you gapped him. You I, just, I just looked, and he was there. I just saw his big foot, and just I died. <laughs> I ate the egg though. So I got oh, did you? Yeah, I did eat that. So you got him, yeah. Showed him. Probably, Her. probably would have died from it, though. <laughs> You're always eating an entire, like, egg that's, like, this big. You know, a raw good protein. Egg. Yeah, it's good protein. A raw egg. It's probably an embryo in that. Oh. Get out of there. That's why we, uh, that's why we have that knob uh, right well, there. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Nice. Oh, shut <laughs> <that> <laughs> my room, man. Really shut them good up. Reaction time. Yeah. I'm surprised it's, like, you know, it's pretty late at night. <laughs> yeah, still, they were going to call someone down. Um, for yeah. those of you who are listening, probably didn't hear that because my editing skills are on par. <laughs> uh, we were we were in a, a school building, so the announcements just went over. Then they were summoning someone down. And we have a dial for the uh, speaker in here. Well, so now just, you need to leave it in because now you're explaining it. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> Turn can't edit it out if you're explaining it now. <laughs> All right, so uh, that that pretty much sums up Arc. Uh, I feel. What, what, what do we think? Yeah, it it's mostly just. A survival game with, with dinosaurs. And it's definitely fun to play with friends, but if you yeah. want to put time into yourself, you're probably going to get bored of it in about a month or two, but you can definitely, you can have your fill. Yeah. yeah. You know? What do you, so would you play that game long term? Like I know a lot of, a lot of people used to stream Ark when it was, you know, popular and stuff. Would you, would you consider, I mean, if, if different career change, would you consider streaming Ark? With friends, probably. Like, yeah. I, I agree with what you said. You know, after, after a few months of playing it when I was in college, I, I got kind of tired of it. I didn't, didn't really have anyone to play with, and that's fine because I was, you know, I was busy with my schoolwork, anyways, and other, you know, extracurriculars as well. So it was mostly like, uh, you know, it's Friday night, whatever else. I got nothing else to do, so I'll just play a little bit of Ark. And but I did get t- kind of tired of it playing alone. But I know I watch like a lot of like Neebs Gaming. They do a lot. I, yeah. Yep. I and, know. And I watching watching that. They're they were really funny to watch. I uh, I remember watching Neebs Gaming um, with Scrap yeah. Mechanic when I was a kid. Yeah. When I was just a kid and I, I think I was in sixth or seventh grade, I just got scrap mechanic. I love building stuff. And, um, oh, I watched, like, I watched that. And I just like, I need to have that. Yeah. And at the time I had a, a laptop with, I think two gigabytes of Ram in it, which couldn't run anything. Right. And I, I, I bought scrap mechanic. And I remember I was so sad when I figured out my game, like my laptop just physically couldn't run. Well, it can barely run Chrome. So I don't know why I thought it could run <laughs> scrap mechanic. Um, but yeah. I feel like I've gotten into a, a time in my life now where like games aren't as fun to play as they are to watch. You know, watching other people play online is more fun. I don't, I don't, I don't have Twitch. You know, I've I had it for just a one time to have a like, like to get some type of promotional thing, and then I've never really been on it. But like on YouTube and stuff like that, I can spend a ton of time watching like Neebs Gaming or Rooster Teeth or I don't know if they right. do it anymore. But I used to watch Rooster Teeth. I watch, a lot. I watch Jacks Up Guy. I watch a lot of. Uh, well, I've always wanted to become a police officer, and yeah. you know, so I, I, I kind of like dedicated like i play a lot of lspdfr which is the gta 5 plugin i'm talked about it a lot on podcasts so oh, I, yeah. I watch a lot of polecat uh 324 um and he just does uh he's basically the best gta 5 role player um okay all right right I'm gonna do some more announcements and louder mm-hmm. than last time yeah, a different voice too. It's not like they turned like it up. They were like, "All right, we need right, this kids." Maybe they're calling drown. you, and we're just like, yeah. "Kids trying to drown me out." Yeah, you just hear knocking at the doors. Please <laughs> open up. That'd be bad. It's the FBI. All the right. FCC could have technically stop this since the radio station. They can like legally just bust the windows. They could drive in with a helicopter and pull you out. <laughs> drive in with the helicopter, bro. Fly in. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's how I like to drive my helicopter. That's what yeah. they did with, helicopter with Well, that's wheels. what they did with uh, George Carlin. He was a radio uh, guy. Yeah. yeah. There was like 10 things you couldn't say on the radio station. They were all cuss words. And he said every one of them in the same <laughs> sentence. He's a comedian. Yeah. Um, you guys should watch some time sometime. He's very, um, 
Definitely not PG thirteen. Vulgar. Oh, yeah. He's a little vulgar. Um, what were we talking about? Arc. Yeah. We're we were, we were segueing from Arc. Yeah. Uh, so let's scratch Arc off the list. Uh, I've never played Seven Days to Die, so I feel like, I feel like Russ is an easier transition, but uh, yeah, but, Russ. Yeah, let's let's Russ talk to Russ then. Be easier. Yeah, and Daisy and, and Seven Days to Die both have zombies in it, so I think. Yeah, Russ I, I want to save Daisy for last because yeah. I I want to nitpick that a little well, bit. Yeah, and that's the one I'm playing right now. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, so let's yeah. transition into Russ. It's not really a transition if you say yeah. you're transitioning into it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. So, uh, Rust, I've watched a lot of Rust. Yeah. I've felt for people who have lost everything in yeah. Rust. Um, why have you played Rust? I- I've never played Rust. Um, yeah, this is gonna I be played awkward. it. I played awkward. it once, and I sucked at it so bad. I was so bad at it. I just, you know, when you get into a game, you don't expect your dude to just be completely nude. Just like, <laughs> just like it's swinging, bro. It's swinging. You're just having a fun time, I guess. And uh, it was weird. So I come up to a guy in his base, and I'm like, "Hey, can you let me in? I don't have anything." And I just, I beat him to death with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> I just beat him to death, and I took all his stuff, and I felt accomplished. I, had a few, I felt a little bad, but you know, don't worry. I, I blew up his base and stuff, so he's fine. <laughs> and, that was me, by the way. <laughs> so, um. So you play uh, Russ. So I have you, played. Yeah. So I feel like without a microphone, you're just kind of an automatically a target, and you're you know you're hunted and killed. I, I think you're just as much a target with a microphone as you're. Really? So that's, you, that's you might be more of a target because depending on what you say, yeah, people will come at you harder. I feel like if you try to be nicer in the game, I feel like that's when people start to take advantage of you. Like, hey man, yeah, no, no problem. It's like, yeah, come over here, or whatever. Like, come into my base, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then they right, stab you to death. Point in, point in case, right there, right? Case yeah. in point. Right. If I if I'm trying to be nice to people because I'm kind of a you know nice person, I think, then I that's the game where you get absolutely destroyed. So I think you have to quickly realize, no, you can't be nice in this game. Um, you have to kind of exactly. fall into what everyone else is doing. Unless you have a, unless you have a clan, then you can kind of hang out with the clan. But that's the most toxic game I've ever played, and probably the least amount of time I've played on that one. <laughs> when I played it, um, there weren't a lot of vehicles. So like nowadays, yeah. there's a lot more vehicles and stuff. There's, they added a lot more. I feel like it's a lot more, it's was exposed to the public and people played it, but like the OG Rust players, you know, it's a whole different crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I played, I played actually before even like the nudity aspect of it. That was so, um, it was like, I think they, I think there wasn't nudity when I played it, but then uh, yeah. I remember when there was, <laughs> yeah. when they, when they, when they the edited it. I, I even played it, but like, I think you could actually even pick like your race and then they made it so. You couldn't even pick your race anymore. So, like, whatever you're born with, that was what you had forever. Every oh, time so you, you die. so can you be spawned in in different locations? Yeah. Uh, just you're just born into a, yeah. a world and you do it. I think stuff? so, basically. Sure. All right, yeah. so let's get some questions for Peterson. And so, uh, have you ever like r- worked like grinded out a character for days just to be killed out of nowhere? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can. I mean, you can. It's the character says. I mean, you just get a new character and you can respawn on your on your bed. Oh. Um, so if you, if you have a if you have a sleeping bag down, then you can respawn on that. Um, so you can't. It's it's possible to to maintain your stuff if you're playing enough. But um, if you if you get offline for a little bit, and somebody comes find your base. You know your base is done basically. Um, if you don't have the defenses up, but uh, yeah, that can be pretty aggravating. Or like you know you can have all your stuff with you and not have a not have a bed, and then uh, you get killed and then you lose all your stuff. But that's kind of the name of the game when it comes to these survival games. You know you. You die, and then you have to start over again. Would Rust be the same game if it wasn't multiplayer? No, it'd be like, I mean, it'd be like playing Ark. Well, actually, Ark, it'd probably be worse. It definitely would be worse, <laughs> because Ark, Ark, uh, I mean, Ark, at least you have the, the dinosaurs to interact with. You know, you, you can do stuff. But with Rust, you basically just build a base. You're like, okay, <laughs> let's add on to the base. So while survival, while, while the uh, multiplayer is definitely toxic, it's the most toxic game I've ever played. Definitely toxic. It's, it's. Um, it'd be, it wouldn't be the same with. Wait, alcohol. you said the most toxic game you've ever played was Rust for sure. If, yeah, even more than Daisy. Yeah, I know you think Daisy's really toxic. I'm but. thinking the COD lobbies. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but the thing is, like, so I, I, I you know, I, I grew up playing at my friend's house the original CODs, and you know, so I was kind of used to that. <laughs> and now, and now, especially as an old, as a, an adult, um, when I do play COD, it's like the, you know, I, I, I'm used to working with high schoolers all the time, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty, my skin's pretty. Uh, Pretty thick, I guess. All right. So. Okay. 
Uh, so, Russ, look at some questions. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, I think that pretty much hands it for all the questions I have for Russ. Like I said, I don't, I've never played Russ personally, so yeah. I, I'm not sure. Kind of, I'm, you haven't either, so that's kind of the, takes out the point of having a co-host. All right. <laughs> uh, so let's, huh? let's skip down and transition to seven days to die. Yeah. Uh, cross that off the list. Seven days to die. So what is, who's played seven days to die? I have. I all have right. played it quite a bit. All right, so this is just not a me podcast, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're not even here. some taste in knowing the game here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. So, Seven Days to Die, let's, uh, let's, let's get a grip on it. What's, uh, what, what's, what's going on in Seven Days to Die? So, when I played it, when I first started playing it, it was just kind of like a uh, zombie survival game. It had a little bit of a storyline, but it had just one map you could play. It was a, kind of a campaign map, but not really. It's a little bit different now. On PlayStation, but on PC is way different. It's like completely different. It's a lot better, I think, in my opinion. But back then, I just watched, uh, you know, Cage Eight Four Eight, no the YouTuber. Yeah, I used to watch him though, and uh, he he was good at it. You know, I used to watch him do playthroughs. He still does playthroughs on the game still, but I don't watch him anymore because I I lost all interest in that game. Mm-hmm. And uh, the PlayStation Four version sucks. It's pretty much worse than when I played it. Yeah. This doesn't have enough, uh, doesn't have enough story to it, and yeah, every seven days, uh, there's a zombie horde that comes after you, and you oh, so hence the name Seven that. Days to Die, mm-hmm. right, right, right. And it's pretty interesting. It gets interesting. There's different types of zombies. There's it. There's a lot of different stuff you can do in the game. I think it's it's pretty good content wise. I think it could have more content to it, but if you're playing with friends, you're definitely gonna have a good time. That's just on you know. You can't argue with that. You're gonna have a fun time yeah. to play with friends. It's fun to play split screen. I play it on Xbox, but yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, it's fun to play split, split screen on that one. Um, and uh, that's kind of like primarily what I do. I have played once online with this, this random guy that he had a lobby, and for the most part, it seems like it's pretty dead at this point on on Xbox, and um, which is fine because I usually play alone anyways, or with a person that I'm sitting with, and that's what I did a lot when I was. In college, was I would just play with a with a buddy in the room, and we'd uh, we just kind of split screen it and um, on like a little twenty four inch TV, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the waves thing I think is the cool was cool about Seven Days to Die, and and I think all these games in all reality are all PC games that have been then adapted to, and so it kind of makes it clunky. Yeah, I don't think it, it. I don't think when they go to transition from a PC game to a console game, it just console is way more restricted. But yeah. I just don't think there's enough, there's not enough, uh, there's not enough availability of resources and console as much as there is on PC. You can get a lot more, you can get a lot more things for PC than you can get for uh, mm-hmm. console. You have console, you have controller. Right. PC, you have a keyboard, you can customize stuff. Like, there's a ton of stuff to it. But I feel like when they transition that, it just doesn't work out that well, you know? I think, uh, I think it's really based on the publisher of the game. Yeah, I mean, like, like uh, Seven Days to Die is built off of uh, Unity, and it's made by the, the Fun Pimps. So, I mean, the Fun the Fun Pimps aren't known that uh, well for you know making great games, and also um, Telltale Games also helped them make Seven Days to Die. But I think it's a lot of off of the game developers and the, the game publishers to convert to console. But I definitely agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, and oftentimes it's like you, you know, like on some days of die, you've got a little cursor you have to move around, and it's kind of slow. You're moving around, yeah. or you can you can use your bumpers to try to move faster. But yeah, I just feel like it's a yeah, it's it's a little bit of struggle, and I, I and it, it does seem restrictive. But I think the one thing that's that's kind of redeeming about that is the uh, is the seventh day wave that you try to rebuild the entire time, and every night you know the zombies and stuff. But that seventh day, you have to be prepared, or you're gonna lose your entire base, and right. get, yeah. But like, you know, you still keep like there. There's still you save, you know, you can save. It's not yeah, like you, you right. get destroyed and then you don't have anything. There's vehicles in the game now a lot more than there used to be mm-hmm. on the PC at least. And I think it just, it ha- it's good content wise. It's just the point to it is a little off. And there's certain things that are like way harder to do. Cause like you can find books and stuff to make certain stuff, but it's hard to find the books. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me at least. But. Yeah. Blueprints and stuff. Right. That too. Yeah. There's different types of zombies. I like that part though. There's yeah. way different types of zombies. There's different. Uh, there's a lot of different things about it, but I don't think 
it's a game you'd probably get pretty bored of. Yeah, you if can. If you played it if by you yourself. Play alone. Yeah. What are the day and night cycles like? Is it is it hard transition for it's just instantly zombies? Yeah. So the day the day is the zombies exist, but um, they're not super aggro. But yeah, then as you, thin. and then at night they get they get a lot more aggravated. Um, yeah. Especially the seventh day is 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 it's really a horde of zombies. Yeah, and the seventh day is a red moon. They call it the blood mm-hmm. moon. And uh, yeah, on PC, it gets really bad and really scary. Honestly, that's that's a that's one thing I do like about Seven Days to Die is it actually it is scares counted you. as a horror video game. Yeah, yeah, it scares you. Like I I personally have gotten scared by that game playing it. Just it's just not you know that's the one thing about it I like. That you can actually like, you can play it and you like tense up <laughs> when you hear certain stuff. You get jump scared by something. I have noticed. I didn't yeah. think about this, but I have noticed I play a lot more in the fall, like around Halloween time. Than oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, and and uh, yeah, it's dark. It, it's it's not like uh, it's not like uh, you know, it's it's kind of dark. It's it's dark, so like you can't really see the zombies. Right. Um, so you just walk up and all of a sudden you hear one. You're like, oh darn, it saw me, and now then you have to run away from it. You have no idea even where you're running. Right. So. I probably should have started with this, but the official um, description of Seven Days to Die is Seven Days to Die is an early access survival horror game, a uh, survival horror video game set in an open world developed by the Fun Pimps. It was released through through early access on Steam for Microsoft Windows and Mac OS X. Why would they release it for Mac? Mac's just not for gaming. Uh, you know. It was released on oh December 13th, 2013 for Linux on November 22nd, 2014. Linux, Linux is an understandable platform to game on. I, w- I would prefer to game on Linux, honestly, than Microsoft just because of how the um, process, um, pro- how your processor is handled. But for Mac, that's weird to game on. I'm a big, big PC guy. Yeah. I'm a big PC nerd. I've um, only ever owned, actually, just, I just ordered my first uh, Mac. I've never, I've never owned a Mac before besides, you know, I've had iPods and whatever, but. Well, Everything I have is PC or Android. I, I like the workflow on Mac. I'm not, I won't dog Mac yeah. or Apple. Um, I, I like uh, I like my brands. I mean, like LG TVs. I love LG. I think they're better than Samsung. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Samsung phones. I think what they're doing within the industry is you know amazing. Um, I, I think what Mac is doing for computers, it, it's really it's really good. Uh, I like their Touch Bar. I don't like how expensive they are because yeah, like the the, the iPhone 11 was. Uh, marketed like a thousand one hundred dollars, but the, the, the for them to make it was like not even five hundred. Just got a notification about the podcast. We should probably start that. Um, so I but in I don't know why you'd sell a game on Mac. I don't know. Yeah. I, I guess it's for the people who. I mean, it, it's a good marketing strategy. I mean, it, it's to make money, but it's just weird that they would even make it for Mac because Mac and Windows run completely different. Um, like Python runs a lot different on Mac and Windows, so it's weird that they probably didn't write the game in Python. I have no idea what you're talking about, but yeah, yeah, it's a gaming no, podcast. Yeah, totally. um, Python and Linux or whatever you're talking about. Linux is a an OS like Windows. Python is a coding script like C Sharp or uh, HD. Yeah, uh, I'll be honest, yeah. he's lost me too. Yep. We we've got the we've got the stories about the, the games here, but he's got the stories about yep, all the he's got the, okay. he's the techie guy we're yeah. just playing along. We're just talking about lores and stuff. <laughs> I think we should get into Daisy, bro. We all right, I'm gonna kinda, tear Daisy apart. That's we, fine. I don't have any uh We uh, actually started debating on Daisy a little bit um oh, a yeah, few days ago on yeah. in, before class. Um so have you played Daisy or just you've seen Daisy? Mm-hmm. I've played Daisy a little bit. I used to. Yeah. Um I bought the game uh, for um, Steam. I played it, then I uh, returned it, <laughs> um, and I, I did that for a while. I bought it again a few months later and returned it. Yeah, were you um, playing on the the uh, standard servers? The what are they called? The uh, um, yeah, I, I played on uh, standard servers, and then I played on the community servers. Um, that's a question I'll get into mm-hmm. in a minute. Um, but Daisy, let me get the description out because I, I I really want Daisy to be like the main talking point of this podcast. No, we spent a lot of time on Skyrim, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So Daisy is a survival game developed and published by uh, Boomia and Reactive, originally starting as a mat for Arma Two. It, uh, a mat as Arma Two. It got insanely popular. Um, the development of the standalone game be- uh, began in 2012 with the first alpha, which came out December 16th, 2013. Five long and painful years later in development, it was officially released on December 13th, 2018. Uh, many things were added after that, like vehicles, base building, and most importantly, mods. So there's, the, there's my uh, description of the game. 
Um, so, uh, I got a few questions to ask. Um, mm-hmm. What, why? So, Mr. Peterson, um, what is uh, Daisy about in a sense? Just to kind of sum it up. So, uh, so in you know, it's it's probably the most strict survival game I've that I've played. You know, like if you if you get sick, you're done. If you if you don't have enough good enough clothes, you're done. If you can't find food, you're done. Um, you know, and and you're really Sense exposed to animals. Yeah, you're done. And honestly, the first, the, especially on on the official servers, the first you know several times you're on, you're gonna die. And it's if you don't, you you somehow have hacked the game, I guess, because um, you know, and and you and you really do need to depend on other people. If you can find other people that are willing to help you out, um, or you're gonna have a hard time um, until you really learn kind of the the ropes. Um, but it's you know it's got the zombie element, um, but it's I don't say I don't think it focuses around the zombies as much as like Seven Days to Die does. Seven Days to Die is all about you know you've got a horde coming in, whereas Day Z yeah they're they're basically there just to add a little bit of another extra layer of this is gonna be a challenge. I don't think. The zombies are scary in Daisy. I think the players no, are scary. This, they are just to run in a straight line for like fifteen minutes, and then you're in a forest, and all of a sudden you hear the pitter patter of someone else's yep. footsteps. That gets my heart racing. Yeah. Just to like, they're yeah. somewhere. They're in the trees. They're somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. And then so you you run into a town, and all of a sudden you see a guy, and you you know you're you're a newbie to the game, and then he comes in, and just, you see him, and he's he's a little bit more geared than you are, but then you're like immediately you're hiding behind a wall. Wall or something like try to try not to try not yeah. to get your attention. Uh, Day Z is a lot about a, a like it's more like kind of a stealth combat. Yeah. Like it's really whoever gets the first drop. Right. Like right. I mean, I I've, I was in a situation where I had a butcher's a cleaver, and this dude had a, a, a automatic gun just pouring away bullets at me because I got that first swing on him. Mm-hmm. I think I three tapped him, um, but he was like swinging away. I was this close. I I died in the end. I I yeah. won the fight, but died in the end. If you get if you get close enough to him, they can't shoot you because the gun won't. Won't let, won't yeah, it'll, it'll raise yeah, up. I, yeah. I I do like that feature yeah. a lot because it balances a little bit. It does. It's yeah. nice because it's it's understandable. You know, like you do hear, then you have hip fire, but mm-hmm. the gun will like if you're not supported, it'll it'll you know right. rock everywhere. So my first question: Do you play with a microphone? Yeah, I, I do. I yeah. kind of said this in a, a, a for a different game, but I feel like if you in Daisy, I definitely feel like if you have a microphone, you're can kind of consider it a friend. Like mm-hmm. if you don't have a microphone, I, no one can trust you. Yeah, yeah. I've, I was always a target before I turned on my mic. I had to learn yeah. the hard way of I need a mic. And, you know, I turned on the mic and I was like, whoa, whoa, I'm, I'm chill, I'm chill. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. are you, are you? And they put two rounds in my face, but I learned that quick that, you know, hey, they talked to me. So Yeah, I don't think they're as toxic as other communities. Like, they, they can be, especially if you're outnumbered or um, if, you, if you don't come off the trust really enough or, you know, if they if they can be just toxic, but I think a lot of times like you can run into them and and um and if you if you kind of show mutually that you're willing to try to work together, then then usually they'll, they'll you'll figure it out. Yeah, that's what I like about um community servers. Let me let me ask yeah. you where where did you start servers? Did you start you know communities or did you start official servers? Where you know like yeah I've like like three servers. Yeah, I don't like official servers because it's it's a lot harder in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I mean you can only have one uh, player, which is a problem in my opinion because you can just raid um you know bases and stuff and then just exit the game and that loot's gone forever um and there's around uh what what I write down other uh, only around 40 official servers um and for a community uh okay that's just a bunch of gibber jabbish that I can't even read I must have been tired writing that script or something because I don't even understand why I was writing that I'm um, always tired <laughs> yeah especially right before uh, spring break oh yeah but I, 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 um, so I, I've been watching people play online and I wanted, and I, and before it was even on Xbox, I was watching people play on PC. Um, I was watching them play Arma and stuff like that, which is where it originates. And, um, so then I saw, I had a friend, well, I saw a lot of reviews of people playing on Xbox when it first came out and they said it was, it was junk, you know, it was, it was, it was clunky and they just didn't like it cause, um, it was, it was difficult to play, but then they've done, they've done definitely some improvements over, you know, the, uh, clunkiness of it. And um, I saw I had a friend that I've that um, I've been playing other games with, and I saw he he had it, and so I asked him. I just messaged him and I said, um, you know, how was the game? And he kind of said that that you know it was really bad at first, but it's gotten a lot better over time. And he had his own he actually had his own personal server, but he said before you get on my before you come on my server, um, go go into an official server and basically just go in there and die a couple times and see yeah, what's learn, like. Learn the rules, learn, if you will. That's yeah. that's 
That's what's up. Yeah. You really got to learn the ropes of day Z before you get into it. Yeah. I mean, right when I spawned and I spawned on coast like everyone right. does. And I didn't really go inland a lot at all. I just stayed on the outdoors. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. find much loot. It was more of a fashion game at that point to me. I just kept finding clothes, switching them on and off. <laughs> I mean, I got really lucky yeah. and I found a can of beans, survived, yeah. and I died trying to, you know, go from yeah. getting inland. Um, it's funny because, like, in, on the coast is where all the all the you know, the noobs are, right? And so you yeah. Have, so, um, and it's a little bit easier to survive, but it's harder to survive because you can't find as much loot. The better loot's on the is inside in the interior. And I think that's I think what I love about the game so much. Um, and it's, it's just how detailed a lot of stuff is, you know, like it is yeah. insanely detailed yeah. and that, that's one problem for me. Like they put, they put a lot of details into unnecessary things. Like if, if you get shot, yeah. you lose a lot of blood and you can be near dying. You know, you, you want to get a, a blood test kit. You can scrape some dry blood off the floor. You have to get a test kit, but to find that test kit's nearly impossible. Or you, or you can do the easier route and just eat some food, regen your blood over time. Is there, mm -hmm. is there any benefit to that? I don't remember. Um, uh, so the, like to the having the tr transfusions, you're saying? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just quicker if you have a transfusion, but transfusions are are obviously easy if you already have a base and you're ready to like you you already have like established you know home base and you you can have um more of that stuff on hand. Yeah. So then you can store it and then and then just use it sometime. But I um, never once found um all the materials to make a transfusion. Yeah. And that, that bothered me because like, I really wanted to, like I, I had a hard, you know, base, um, in, in Daisy and I, like I was, you know, it's established mm -hmm. and I just really had food stacked up and I, I well, that was a bad idea cause it kind of went rotten pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was established. I had all my stuff. I needed the materials and all of a sudden it just got taken away from me. That was my first gunfight I was ever in. Um, I lost to a guy with a, on the side of a, a, a. I lost to a guy on the barrel of a sniper rifle. Mm. First bullet zoomed past my head. I remember I, I have a you surround sound headset. Heard it, went, mm. and I was like, okay. So I ran to the base, and before I got there, there were like three guys just mowing down my doors. Yeah. So I just like kind of admitted that this was the end. Hop on the mic. I was begging, please don't do this. As I was shooting back with my pistol. Yeah. Um. That that was the first pistol I ever found with a mismatched magazine. Um. I had to look so hard to find a pistol and the ammo. And like I remember, I only had two mags. I went through those extremely quick, which was a bad idea. And I just sat there, reloading, yeah, reloading. each and single one. And that's when I got mowed down by those yeah. guys. Yeah. So I I was I was pretty heartbroken about that. Um. That was that was my first um, that was my first death of a grinded out character. What about what about you in this game? Um. First death of grind grinded out character. Yeah, the bottom question. Um, uh, one that I've spent a lot of time in, you're saying. Um I'm not gonna be on I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I've ever had one that I've been like really grinded out that I've actually lost, um, that I've died in. Um, for the most part. I'm actually on a I'm on a uh, community server. This is the one that I spent the most time in. And um so I'm on a uh, not yeah, I'm on a community server and I have not died on this community server. Um, it's not like they've like really up they they have up the amount of food you can find. So like every every I would say sixty percent of zombies have food on them. Um, but I have <laughs> I'm kind of dominating when it comes to my my kill death ratio because it's since I've got a Discord they hit me and they document your kill death ratio and stuff like that. I've got like a six hundred. Uh, KD. I wish on that. I don't know how I'm surviving, and I should probably knock on wood because probably next time I get on, I'll probably be killed right away. But I actually lead a faction on that, um, and I think that's what uh, that's kind of been like the redeeming thing is that I lead, playing I lead with a faction. friends is is a lot yeah. more uh, redeeming. Yeah. Um, I've never played with friends. I I never got any Discord friends or random strangers I met online. I never yeah. did that. Well, I, I tried to, mm -hmm. um, but most people were already in factions. They didn't want them. I do I do remember one time. Where I died, um, I, th I think this was in Rust. No, this was definitely in DayZ. Was it? Yeah, so um, I got robbed in uh, DayZ, you know. I, I, I was robbed at gunpoint, and I gave him all my stuff, and threw out my pockets, yeah. and trade for my life. Mm -hmm. That was the most degrading dehumanization <laughs> yeah, thing I've ever a, gone through. That's the point, man. That's what they're trying to do. <laughs> it's like, give me all your stuff. I, I was like getting, I couldn't, like, I couldn't wrap my head around yeah. it. I just started unloading my pockets. Um, that's where I lost my, that, that's, I gave away my mismatch, um, magazine for the pistol I had. Yeah. 
Um, and then I got this faction and I said, Hey, I just got robbed. Do you want to get some free loot? Cause this guy had a base and everything. I led him to there. Turns out there's like six or seven people in the faction. Yeah. They, they he opened the doors and it's just six people blowing away <laughs> yeah. that guy just to watch him frantically like run away and then just get mowed down yeah. and under storm the building. Yeah. This faction that I've got, is, uh, it's gotta be over a dozen people. Really? Yeah, and and it's, it's, it. it gets bigger and bigger all the time because uh, there's there's guys on there that play. I I don't, I don't play that much actually, even though I lead the faction. Um, I play maybe Fridays every once in a while. I'll, I'll, sometimes it'll be like two weeks before I get on there again, and then I come on and like, oh yeah, we haven't seen you in a while. Like, yeah, no. But um, these guys are always recruiting more people, and they're getting like their their actual in life friends, and they're getting them to come over and play. Um, but I actually was thinking about the time that I, that I, I did lose. Um, so I have died. I was thinking about these. But the first time I lost like a, a character that had a lot of gear and stuff like that, it was actually a car crash, uh, which is because you can die in car crashes too. Yeah, wait, you, um, did you find the car fully assembled? What's the no, story yeah, with you that? you had to build a car. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I know that. But this, this actual, though, the one I'm in now, um, the cars come, come fully assembled. Um, yeah, the cars and the guns do. The, more, the big part of like this one I'm in right now is it's basically it's factions. And you have to you have to be in a faction and you have to compete in your faction. Um, Something I didn't realize is you're in, you're in the community. They can up the the food um, yeah. the food rates and everything. Yeah. That's nice. So that definitely it definitely helps out for those who struggle with like their base game. Um, Building a base, it, it's like in in base game with no that is freaking brutal. I, yeah. I remember that was my um. I, I took me a week to build one base, mm -hmm. just one little four like one by one base with a a floor and walls and a roof. Yeah. It took me like a week straight mm -hmm. uh that that and then i i think i lost to hunger i think <laughs> yeah the, then this the, server doesn't have anything, anything like upped on the base so the base building's the same oh um it's basically just guns it's just guns cars and like a like a little bit more food everything else is the same so um you like to find clothing and stuff like that's the same are there grenades and um daisy yep there's grenades there's actually landmines as well can you be blown up if you're carrying a gas can um yeah, you can. So they they can actually shoot the gas stations too and blow you up. I don't know about the gas cans. I'm not sure about that. Well, but you can. I think you can actually blow if you have a if you have a grenade in your in your like in your jacket. I think if they shoot the jacket, it can actually blow up and kill you. Yeah. Well, I remember. Um, I I, ha I was carrying. I think it was a door to my almost built car. Um, I was missing a few parts of the engine. I was carrying the door there, and that by the way, that's a pass. Just yeah. to carry the door it takes you forever. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I was walking, set the door down, got the gas can, and all of a sudden I just explode, and yeah. I had no clue why. But I, I, I thought I heard someone like, I knew it was a player was close, which is why I got out the gas can because I was gonna drop so I could, you know, do my stuff. Yeah, yeah, and that's how I died. I just, mm -hmm. you know, but that that was like kind of dumb. I just like went in and was like, I'm gonna build a car today, and I, you know, spent the yeah the majority of that time building a car, and then I just died right. like that. My faction will actually hoard cars. We had, um. Last I was on there, and they did the, they did, actually did a car reset, and the, you know the guy that manages it can do whatever he wants. But I think we had like a um, we had eight cars, um, and then we had uh, five trucks. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it was really good. And again, we've got a pretty big faction, but we were definitely hoarding at that point. Which yeah. I was did like, we should probably not be because you know it's kind of toxic for us to be hoarding all these things. But wait, um, so do you play with? So in your in your faction, you yeah. you um your friend hosts the server. Uh, Not this one. This is a different. Okay. This is a different server. Um, yeah. Did you was it like a private server or how how did that work? Yeah, you pay for a private server and then you can and then you can set it to wherever you want. So my yeah. friend, my friend actually, he had a private server that the, the one that you're thinking of the when I first started out, um, and he actually forgot to pay for it like the last two weeks ago or something like that. So he lost it, which is fine because we play on this one more than anything else now. Um, so they pay for that and they can kind of sit to whatever they want to the parameters of it and then they can control it. Um, and people, a lot of people think it's, it's cross platform, but it's actually not. No, it's not. Yeah. So a lot of people think that it is because, because I mean, people can play on mouse and keyboard on Xbox or the, and you can, you have a lot of control over it in the settings. So, and you can like, you know, mod it. Which yeah. Is that's basically what I like. I'm it. a, I came from console. So yeah. I, I always, I saw something on TikTok and it was like, he, you built X amount of money set up and you still play on, uh, you know, uh, controller so I, that's yeah. the day i threw away the control i didn't throw it away I threw it in the drawer and just dedicated myself to learning keyboard and mouse yeah. and actually it's, i like it a lot better yeah. than keyboard and mouse it's faster and it's more accurate a little bit more accurate playing like shooter games i was always like i always had bad aim because i was scared to push the stick 
Just yeah. like if I pushed it too much, the dead zone always got me. But now with a mouse, like I, it's just like I don't know what it is. It's just like like I can tune it. Just, well, you can do that. With, I feel like you can do. I do that with like COD and stuff like that. You get used to like your gun. Yeah. After playing a little bit, and then you can you get used to how much you have to pull it down. Mm-hmm. I know in Rainbow Six Siege on my console, I always I have the sensitivity down really low. Yeah. But the dead zone up super uh super low too. So like just the little amount is just it it. it it's weird because like when you're shooting, it's it's almost like auto aim of just it, it kind of stays there. There's less gun sway, mm-hmm. and but the dead the dead zone being so low, are um, it, it's really accurate, but like it it feels broken. I don't know how to explain. Yeah. It. It's it's just broken simply. It, it's weird to explain it like that. Yeah, I've never played Rainbow Six, but if I've always had people say all the time like, "Oh, you should play, you should play," and you will. Happen. You'll break something. I've broken <laughs> yeah. two controllers playing it. That's the, that's the thing that, like, I when I was a kid, I would get, I would play games and I get mad. Um, and I've always again, I've always been kind of a very mild demeanored person. And that's kind of I was like, you know, why am I getting mad at a game? I shouldn't get a game that I'll be mad at. Which, you know, Daisy. A lot of people get mad at that's Daisy. The fun about Daisy, yeah. But um, but you know, once you get into a community server, I think that's where it's at. If you get mad at the the base, the base is the base um level game, or the uh, sorry the uh, Official servers. Um, it's understandable you, you, when you, you die. Do, yeah, you die, and 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 I think in those games, honestly, this those official. I feel like most of the time you're not even trying to you're not even trying to build a base. You're not even trying to like create a faction. I feel like most for the most part, you're trying to survive. And it's not even against people. It's the yeah. game is killing you more than people yeah. are. You get sick. You get sick, and you're dead. Yeah. And what's what's cool about that? Like if you know you're full on all your food and water and your and your blood and everything like that to get sick is actually impossible. You can't get sick. You can touch whatever you want, eat whatever you want. You could, you can drink whatever water. You can eat whatever food you want. You can't get sick. It's really nice, like yeah. that. I'm, I'm glad it's it's it's. I'm glad there's some sort of relief in that game of like just the weight lifted off yeah. your shoulders, where it's just not constantly looking over your shoulder of your own self. I keep hitting that trash can. Yeah, I think I kicked it once too, or kicked something. Yeah, it was the trash can. <laughs> Why you've been kind of quiet? How's it going, over there, buddy? I don't know. What it, I don't know uh, Daisy. Yeah, I never play this game. It's fine. It's uh, it's it sounds cool. It, it's a lot like um, it's it's kind of like Rust, but just more on steroids. It's like one of the most hardcore survival yeah. games I've ever played. It's yeah, extremely I heard hardcore. it was pretty uh, pretty extreme. It's rough. It's definitely rough. So uh, let's let me. Did I ask all the questions on my paper? Oh yeah. Well, so first time ever playing the game, and mm-hmm. you spawned it on coast. What were your first thoughts? It was, I mean, you get nervous, you get scared, you know, you see things. You, I mean, you, at first you see the zombies, and you're like, oh man, the zombie, there's zombies there. And, and like when they fir- when I first said zombies, I had nothing. You know, I, you, you usually spawn with like uh, some rags and like a pear or something. And um, I just ran from them and I had like this horde of zombies running behind me like a train or a kite. And, um, and but, but then, uh, you know, when you first see your first hu- other, other player, then you're, that scares you as well um, quite a bit. Um, but it, I, I was like, you know, it's a it's a big place. It's complete, I, and there's no in game map too. That's that's pretty pretty um quite the struggle compared to like other games. Is like at least in other games you have an in game map. Um, or at least sorry, I don't mean in game map because you can find a, you can, a dude, hi- I was gonna say yeah, a um a hiker's map I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, those are you know you don't have that right away. Yeah. So you can you can look up an app, and once you find the app, that makes it a lot different. You can look up the map on your app. Yeah, I don't um, like that though. It's yeah. uh, I just it does like take away the game a little bit. Yeah. Um, once you learn, I think once you, once you learn the cities and the locations, and then you yeah, get down I couldn't a tell you a single place about any location. Really, I have got like you know, I I played a lot in Electro, um, Electro, yeah, Chernogorsk. Never so, heard of the game. That's that's the bottom right. Um, oh oh <laughs> oh yeah uh, it, yeah obviously oh, I yeah. don't know the <laughs> yeah yeah it's actually one of the it's it's a big city and it's a city that usually gets a lot of spawns. Electro, um, you probably you've probably been there, uh, if I had to guess. Um, it's got a lot, like a lot of shipping containers outside of it and stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's the, the one thing that um is kind of hard for me is traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, like it, it takes forever traveling to yeah. build a car. To walk it is how much is it to walk? I think somebody's done it before. It's like it's several hours to walk. It's the it's thing. it's not fun. I mean, yeah. most of the game you will spend walking. Mm-hmm. If you get if you get lucky enough where you get a car and you get to drive everywhere. And you don't attract a horde of zombies when you just pull up in your car into the city. Yeah, you are you're doing something right. I don't know. I don't. I want to know what's going on. Yeah. My my first mistake was I pulled up in a car, and this is when I was playing in a um in a a, a community server, but it was an open community server on a Discord. Um, 
pulled out in the car, popped my gun off just for fun. Yeah. No idea. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll hunt people. If, there, if we hear somebody in our town, we're in Debovo. Um, but if we hear somebody in like Chernogorsk or Debovo, um, we will, we'll hunt them down. That's, what happens to me. There. that's our, that's our claim territory. So we'll yeah, hunt them down. I didn't, I didn't, the, yeah. the, between the zombies and the people, I, I knew I was dead. Yeah. I just didn't know what to do. Like, I didn't know if I should fight off the zombies first or waste them on the zombies yeah. or the people. Cause the zombies are always going to come, you know, you can kill one, you know, you, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you kill three and more, more come. Do, are suppressors in the game? I'm pretty sure yeah, they are. Not for every gun, though. Not for like even your like your like it's mostly for like Small your guns. AK. Yeah, your Kalashnikovs, your 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 SG40 or sorry your um your SMGs, your pistols, and your like low level rifles. But like high level rifles, no, no. You can what you can do is you can get a um a water bottle suppressor, and so you basically yep. get a water bottle and, and you you can duct wrap it in duct tape. But that only lasts a couple shots, and then it's it's destroyed. Or you can keep, I think you can keep repairing it with duct tape. But um, I mostly don't even use that at all because it's yeah. just so much of a pain. Well, it, it's I, I think um, noobs should have suppressors. I know that I know that's not like contradiction. Like, how is a noob gonna get a suppressor? Yeah. Um, because first you gotta find the gun, the ammo, the the, the clip, the the suppressor. But yeah. sometimes you just find the suppressor and you have no gun. <laughs> I know. I I did that. Um, uh, where I found a clip and no gun. Yeah. And I just carried around that clip like it was a little piece of gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that then you know I gave it to the dude who robbed me. And, yeah. Yep. It's funny, like my actually my friend uh, when I was playing with him, you know, there's like there's the gold eagle, the gold desert yeah. eagle, and no one can find it. And he was like, somebody's like, there's like one or two gold eagles on this entire map. And like literally, when I was like first playing, I found it, and it was like just in like a, a random shack somewhere. I was like, hey, gold eagle. He's like, seriously? He's like, he's been playing way longer than I have. Like, seriously, you already found that? Like, yeah, man. I took a screenshot, sent it to him. Wow. I didn't even pick it up. I just left it because I was like, "You can, pick, you can pick it up," but he, I don't think he actually even did. I just, I just left it there for him. Um, hmm. I picked it up and then I picked it up and dropped it because it will reset. Um, yeah, and it'll last longer than as opposed to like every ten minutes it resets. So if yeah. I pick it up and drop it, then it lasts longer than that. So yeah, that's yeah. something I, I didn't like about the game. Like pockets were full, left, came back. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, you go 100 meters away and it's, it resets. Yeah, yeah, and that that scared me too because I didn't know if a player took it or. If it just despawned because like yeah. I never had like an internal timer in my head. Yeah. The first time I ever ran into a player, that was the worst thing ever. Yeah. Or I think it was like the second or third, maybe. I was running, you know, long. I was running for a while and yeah. ran into that forest and then I heard the pitter patter of the feet. I was like looking around and I stopped, laid down, and like I couldn't find them anywhere. I think they ran past and we just yeah. completely missed each other. But like for the next ten minutes, I was so paranoid of like, what if I'm like because I was obviously running the way that they were coming from. Yeah. So I was like, what if I'm running into a trap? What are they running from? And they were, you know, they were beating feet, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of dangerous to beat feet in that game because, you know, your hunger goes away kind of quick. Yeah. My first interaction with a human was one that I could actually talk to because you'll find the, some of that on mics like you were, like you were. And, um, and uh, my first interaction with a person I could actually talk to was um this guy who came up to me and said hey man can you kill me because he wanted to have a reset and I, all i had was a knife and actually i was starving like i was i was literally starving i could not find food so i was actually picking up human meat because you can eat human meat yep and he and i had it in my hand when he came up to me and i so i turned around and I had human meat and i was like trying to put it away real quick and he, <laughs> he, he saw me he's like he's like hey man can you kill me he's like dude is that human meat that's messed up can you kill me <laughs> i was like you're telling me this is messed up and you're asking me to kill you it's like okay but i was like yeah i killed him he's like hey thanks man i really appreciate it i was like yeah no problem man i'm just killing you but um yeah i've had you know i had run-ins with people that were like just you know they were trying to help each other out a little bit he, they couldn't talk to us and stuff like that but yeah i think um, that's what that's what my favorite thing is kind of like yeah on my when, when i had my established base i had cans of food mm -hmm. i think i gave like a wanderer like a and like you know, and I was pretty close to coast. I was yeah. like in the middle of either or big city inland, you know, kind of close to the coast. So I was like right in that hot spot of everyone's kind of going to be there. Um, I was like on the outskirts of the town. Um, so you know, it was. I always ran into people, and they're like, "Hey, man, you got any food?" I remember a lot of times I just got tired of people coming up, so I just shot them in the face and just like instantly. Yeah. Like I, I remember. I have an amazing story. Like this dude's like, Hey, you know, this is my first ever time playing. Do you have any like food for me? Like, what do I do? Like, yeah. He's like, do you, do you have any food? I'm like, yeah, come inside. And he turns the corner. I just blast him away. Yeah. That's most of them. They need, yeah. they need, um, death 
mic. They need hot mics when yeah. you die. Just to hear that scream of like a yeah, ghost. Frustration. Yeah. 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 He said one word. He all I heard was <laughs> That's all I heard. <laughs> Gunshot. <laughs> yeah, he's to actually push down like the D pad and he's down on the D pad to, to talk. Usually I'm usually I'm talking, I'm talking in, in, in uh, not in game chat, but in uh you know my uh Discord. Uh actually not the Discord, the uh the Xbox Live chat. Oh. Um so, you know, I I very rarely talk to people in, in game anymore. Um just because I'm, I'm a part of a faction, so I play in the faction all the time. Yeah. Um so uh but yeah, the uh that's actually kind of a pain because you have to you have to back out of it to then talk to them. They can hear you, but they can hear you, but you can't hear them, so you have to back out to talk to them. I mean, you even have to have if you have a, a biker's helmet on, um, it even muffles your voice. Yeah, that's why yeah. I I, yeah. I, 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 I didn't hate. know that for several times. I was like talking to people and they're like they're like talking to me and I was talking to them back and they're like, okay, man, well, whatever. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm answering your question. <laughs> and then like, and then the, but then there was one guy who was like, "Yeah, I can't hear what you're saying. It's just muffled." I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, if you get the if you get the, the helmet on, I can't hear what you're saying." I was like, "Oh, I didn't know that." So I'd like take it off, put it in my hand. I was talking to him and stuff. Yeah, and didn't weird, know that. It's, it's very detailed. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird. Detail. That's what I like about the game. I I, yeah. I love it. I, I have a love hate relationship yeah. with that game. Gotcha. I, I don't have it anymore because you know I've like lost my mind on it. Yeah, I could easily just pour hours and hours to the game, yeah. uh, and then lose it all. That's I just yeah. hate that. And the, you know the stealth aspect of it. I think that's what I like a lot, a lot about it. Is yeah, you know, you, you you want to raid like a, an air base. You want to raid somebody's somebody's actual base, yeah, like a military base. You yeah. can't you can't run in there guns blazing. No. You got to walk yeah. stealthily. You I mean you can't drive in yeah. there. I mean between the zombies and the the, the possible people there, you you really got to yeah. Like I I've only found a it's not called a scar, but I think I found a scar or what yeah. it would be a scar an mm-hmm. AR. Um, found it ammo. You know, took it home. Um, didn't make it, didn't make it home. Yeah. Dude, I had like a few people chasing me. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun to like, you know, get, get with a group of guys and you're talking, you're talking over your mics and stuff like that. And you're, you're, um, you know, stealthily approaching a place and you're talking, you're like, you're like, you, you can, you can actually be like pretty tactical about it. And you say like, you know, right. go around the side and, and, um, you know, approach it from, from a very tactical viewpoint. But yeah. Um, so let's, let's, let's wrap up the podcast uh, really quickly. I'm not well, not quickly. So uh, I'm gonna list the games uh, that we just talked about, and I want I want us to rate them on a scale of one to ten. Um, so let's let's start at the top of the list. So Daisy, the one we just talked about, what's uh what's our rating here? I, I I'll give it a, a solid six point five out of ten. Hmm. I honestly wasn't gonna I wasn't I'm not gonna lie I was gonna say seven. So we're actually not far off on our rating. I don't know if I won you over a little bit with our discussion on it, but a little bit. I might buy it permanently. Why? What do you think? Um, I'm not gonna give a rating because I haven't played it yet. All right. Uh, so let's give a good rating on Skyrim. I haven't played it, so I won't rate it. Ten out of ten. Yeah, I was gonna say nine, but but I wouldn't. I don't. I don't blame him for ten. Out of all these games, this is probably the most well done. I mean, it's a it's a professional game, right? The rest definitely. of these are not. I, I, why, why did I say definitely? Like I know the game. <laughs> okay, so uh, Russ. Um, I'll give it a solid five out of ten. I was gonna agree with five, actually. Yeah, um, I'll give it a five. <laughs> um. And Ark, I'm going to give it, I'll give it a five, two. I'll give it a five, right? Because Russ and Ark are kind of the same game. I'll give it a five out of ten. Six out of ten. I put five as well, um, and I actually have written down here as proof. So. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, and the last one, Seven Days to Die. I haven't played it, so I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, PlayStation version, two out of ten. Uh, hmm. PC version, probably like a six. 6.5. I give it a six because of the. I think it's most most creative about the seventh day forward. Like I don't think there's a lot of other games, if any games, that yeah. are like that. So I think the, for creativity points, I give it a six. Right. All right. All right. That that pretty much wraps up the podcast, folks. Um, next week, where can I find that paper? There's a paper somewhere that's going to talk about what we talk about next week. Um, where is it? That's a good that's question. It. All right. Why won't you tell us what we're talking about? All next right. Week? So next week is a, next week's agenda. Is we're gonna talk about oh. cyberpunk. Oh, here it news. is. All right. All right so uh, sorry to cut you off. Next week's uh, news, we're gonna it. talk about uh, some old news, um, but yeah. you know, some nudge needed to talk about news. Uh, a cyberpunk source code was stolen and auctioned off to the highest bidder because people were tired of waiting for updates. Really? So, yep, just kind of sucks. So we'll screw you. Um, Stony, uh, Sony's stance on cyberpunk's return to the Sony PlayStation Store. Um, and I want to talk. I, I really wanted to talk about next week all the updates that make. Cyberpunk function as a game 
and uh, popular streamer thoughts on Cyberpunk and the company's speech that they gave out to all the people um, to try to apologize and smooth things over, um, whether if it worked or not and won your heart over. Um, that'll be debated next week on JWCP. Uh, you just listened to JWCP podcast number 10. Today is April 1st. I'm Jonathan. I'm Wyatt. And that special guest star, Mr. Peterson. Yep. Thanks for having me. No problem. No problem. All right. Goodbye, Internet. See ya. Wow. That's- I guess smacks.